And take one. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow. Yeah. Hey y'all, this is Dan with the Southern Paddler Channel and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. You can probably tell because I'm not in my kayak and I'm not on the water. Um, we had storms today. They were calling for them all week long. You know, it wasn't going to be a good day to get out, so just kind of resolved myself to saying, okay, not going to be a paddle day. So earlier this week, I'm watching YouTube and uh, a good friend of mine, Glenda Redcliffe, uh, check out her channel. Uh, she does some great hiking and, and camping and adventure stuff. Uh, Glenn and I went to high school together. We've been friends a long time, so I enjoy her channel. So she released a video this week, uh, I think five stocking stuffers under a certain amount uh, for hiking and stuff. And uh, so I commented on her video, and she's like, hey, you need to do something like that for kayak. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. And especially since I can't <laughs> actually be on the water today, I thought, well, I think I'll give that a go. So here we are. So uh, th Glenna, thank you for the suggestion. And uh, and so mine is going to be very similar. Um, I've got... 10 actually a little more than 10 but these are just 10 stocking stuff for ideas most of them are going to be 30 dollars or less and uh just some things that i think are very useful that i think most people who kayak would enjoy so so here we go with some good stocking stuff for ideas for the kayaker in your life all right first and foremost no not necessarily for, foremost but uh first of all carabiners uh you can't have enough carabiners uh, they come in different shapes and sizes. These are your basic ones. They're real standard, um, you know, low to medium grade. But uh, they just got, they all have the little spring bar and, and you can just, you know, clip them on each other and into different things. Great for attaching bags and, and stuff on your boat. You know, these are pretty low grade, low quality. And I say low quality. They're fine for utility purposes. You use them on your boat. You just don't want to go rock climbing with these things. Uh, rock climbing carabiners, uh, they have to be specifically rated for that. So don't go, you know, hanging yourself out of a tree with one of these things. I uh, wouldn't recommend it. But they're great to have different sizes for different uses. Um, and they also have some different styles. This is a more heavy duty one. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more. These standard ones, you could get a 10 pack for like eight bucks. Um, these are going to be, you know, four for maybe 12, 15. Uh, but they're a little sturdier, and uh, then you've got some like this that are like locking. So it has a little sleeve that you can you can twist, you know. And then once you attach it to something, then you turn that sleeve, and, and it threads up, and it locks, and it'll stay in that closed position. So if you have a need to secure something and for it to stay exactly <laughs> closed, you can get that too. So again, again, carabiners, great idea, good stocking stuffer. All right, next on the list, uh, we have dry boxes. Now, let me start with what I don't like about dry boxes. And, and most of these things, there's not a brand. They're just things that I like to have, and I just I buy whatever. But what I can tell you about dry boxes is I don't like clear ones um, because in the summertime, whatever you have in here, this thing basically becomes an oven. Uh, light and heat comes in. It, it gets stored up in there, and it can't get out. It's hard on your phones and camera gear and stuff like that. So I try to avoid... Um, all clear ones like that and even ones like this like this is a pelican 1040 they have a model that's identical to this except the lid is clear again if you want to see in there or something that's fine if you need that but just know that in the summertime light is going to get in there and it's going to really warm up so i like the solid color ones now one nice thing about this pelican uh, 1040 is you can see it's already got padding uh, added to the inside of it and so when you put your phone in there and stuff, and when you close it up, you're going to get jostled around, but you know it's not going to just get beat to crap, you know, on, on this hard plastic because it's got that soft rubber coating on there. So the Pelican 1040 is a good one. Um, let's see. I think that that one goes for about um, $22 and stuff. This one's actually a little bit cheaper, even though it's bigger. It's an MTM Survivor box, um, and it comes with a compass. Whatever. Um, but it, it has a clip here, but it also has one on each side, just like this. Now, I've, I've removed them because they come off real easily. I've removed these clips because, you know, when I'm in my boat, I want it to be able to get in and out and close it like that. Now, they're called dry boxes. They're going to be fine for, like, splashing, keeping water out of, out of the box. And if you turn over, they'll probably be fine, you know, as long as you get righted pretty quickly. You probably don't want to hold these underwater. Now, some of these are rated to actually be submersible. But that's a different rating for most of these things. Um, this right here, 
that's a that's a pressure valve so it, it lets the pressure equalize because when it goes under water um, you're going to have more pressure uh, I think on the outside the inside it'll want to come in or maybe vice versa uh, I don't know I'm not a physicist but anyway it helps equalize the pressure to keep it from leaking um, so you know that one has that this one doesn't have that but again I've turned over several times with this it's fine I, it's bigger and see I've added my own little padding in, in here um, I used to have some in the top on this one I guess I uh, forgot to do that but for the most part it just keeps stuff still and that's just basically some kind of drawer liner you know some kind of foam rubber matting or whatever that you can get at any uh, utility store great to, to line the inside of the, the boxes but uh, another thing I like about this MTM Survivor dry box, it's like 15 bucks, so it's cheap. But it works, you know, it does fine. It's got the little O-ring around the lid that, that, again, you probably don't want to submerge it, but it, it keeps the water out. But what I do like about it is it's got these holes here. So you can see I've got a smaller carabiner that I run through the hole. Then I've got some paracord, which is also on the list. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then another carabiner here. So I put this in my boat, you know, and then I just click and it's attached to my boat. If I turn over... It's not going anywhere. And trust me, I have turned over several times, never lost a dry box or a dry bag uh, because of you know my tethers. My GoPros, I keep them individually tethered to my boat. Whatever boat I'm in, they're always tied to the boat. And again, that saved my GoPros on many occasions. I've broken several poles and camera mounts and they've fallen off in the water and I just grab the cord and pull it back up. And so I've never lost anything of any value on the river because I use these tethers. Uh, and now a tether is simply this. So let me just go ahead and talk about this now. This is 550 paracord, one of the most common kinds. They say rated at 550 pounds. I don't know. It don't matter. This stuff is going to suit your purpose <laughs> for being on a kayak or canoe. It's going to do anything you want it to do. Um, so it's going to hold stuff in your boat. It's going to let you pull your boat around a little bit within reason, drag it up a hill. I've done all that. But you get some paracord like this, and then you can cut it to length. I do recommend burning the ends because it's basically plastic material. So you burn it so it don't fray and come apart. Uh, and if you do that, just remember, it is plastic. It's hot and it's sticky. So don't touch it. Let it cool. Do it outside because, first of all, you don't want to breathe it or smell it in your house. Do it outside. Burn the end. Lay it down somewhere and let it cool off for a, a minute or two. It'll be fine. But uh, then once you do that, you know, so like this right here, this is just a little short tether that I've made with two carabiners and a short piece of paracord. And, uh, and it just makes it easy to tie stuff to your boat and keep stuff uh, attached, even if you turn over. So paracord's another great thing, along with carabiners and, and dry boxes. And while we're talking about dry boxes, let me just go ahead and talk about dry bags. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. You know, this is a 5 liter. This is a 10, it says right here. Um, I have a 20 liter dry bag that, I, that is always ready and always has everything I want in it. I have my carabiners, uh, all my, I have some gear ties, which is on the list. I'll talk about, you know, things for just tying stuff together, keeping stuff together. I have some Ziploc baggies, all my camera gear I need is in there. And, uh, and so I have this one bag, my throw rope, you know, sometimes I have first aid kit in there. So I just have one 20 liter bag that's kind of like my go bag. It's always ready and it's got everything that I know I'll need on the trip. And so it sits over there and I just grab it and I go. And uh, it, most of these have clasp on it that you can, um, you know, secure there. They got clasps here on the handles. Um, that one actually has a handle uh, made into it, which is really nice. The first one I used had a rounded handle, which is, which is great. My current one uh, has a flat handle, not as comfortable, but you know, you're not gonna be carrying it by the handle that much, but still dry bags are such a, such a great thing. Um, these smaller ones are good if you just have something like I use this for like in the cooler months. If the weather's kind of in between, it's like, okay, maybe I want to have a, uh, a toboggan or some gloves. I'm not sure if I'm going to need it all day, but I can put them in here and it's going to stay dry until I need it and I can get it in and out. And basically what you do is, you know, you put stuff in and out there and then you just, uh, you roll it down, you know, two or three times and then fold it together and clip it and you know it keeps stuff dry it'll also hold air in there because it's airtight it's watertight so you put some air in there it, it'll float and um so that's another nice thing about those dry bags is uh if you don't have them tethered make sure that they float so you can get them back real easily okay uh the next thing we're going to talk about is uh you know getting water out of your boat because <laughs> that does happen whether it's a wave rain or you're you know you're dripping in the boat whatever uh, one of the real handy things to have is a bilge sponge. Uh, this one is extremely dirty. <laughs> That's why it's, it's supposed to be solid yellow, not yellow and brown. But uh, 
you know, it, you can just use a kitchen sponge. It don't have to be anything fancy. But if you buy a build sponge, you can search for them on Amazon. And uh, this one is like, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. Um, but it, they'll have this loop on it. So again, put a carabiner on it and you can attach it to your boat. You turn over, it's going to stay with the boat. So these are handy to have, but it's just a sponge. And so you put it down in the water, you know, and press it and then it absorbs the water, hold it over the side and squeeze it out. So that's, uh, that's the most basic way to get water out of your boat. If you think you're going to have a lot of water that you need to get out, or you have like a sit-inside kayak uh, or maybe canoes, uh, a, a hand pump or a, a hand bilge is, a, is another great thing. This is from Seattle Sports. It's about $25, I believe. Probably about the cheapest one you can find. Uh, it's got a little nice handle here. And it does have the, uh, ho what's it called, a hose bar right here fitting. So if you want to have a put a hose on it that you can make sure you get the water outside of the boat, Honestly, like this edge of my boat, the times I've used this when I've just stuck it down in the water and you start pumping like this, it shoots that water out a pretty good ways. You don't really need a hose. Um, your more expensive ones will come with a hose with them, but uh, I've not actually needed a hose, but you can do that. But yeah, that's just another great little thing for, like I said, about 25 bucks that's uh, good to have. All right, uh, let's see. Yeah, so I mentioned the gear ties earlier. Uh, what these are, and see, they just, they, there's all kinds of different sizes. They come in these little variety packs and they're like, you know, 15, 20 bucks. And, uh, and they're basically just almost like pipe cleaners, except they have the rubber coating instead of the fuzzy coating. And you can just wrap them around stuff, you know, and whatever you do, whatever shape you put them in, they're going to stay. And so they're, it's great for just quickly tying stuff together and keeping stuff together. Or like if you have some, you know, loose things, um, that you want to like just all put together like that. And all of a sudden, and throw that in a bag or something, and now everything's kind of tied together. So they're just really handy to have, and they're cheap and expensive. So those gear ties are a great, uh, great stocking stuffer. All right. Um, now, this part. Now, so I want to talk about um, knives. <laughs> uh, I like knives. I like having a knife on me, and they're, and they're handy to have. And I think every kayaker, you know, everybody outdoors should have a knife. Um, there's Obviously, I'm not going to get into, you know, which is best and brands and all this stuff. Uh, just find what works for you. Find something that you want something that is going to be useful uh, and something that can, you know, have maintain some kind of an edge. Um, in my dry box, uh, I have a Kershaw 1555 Ti. And I like this because it's all metal. There's no plastic. It's tough. It's not going to break. No little plastic pieces are going to come off. It's all metal. It's one-handed operation. It's got a little knob on the blade that I can flip it open. Then the uh, release is there. You know, and then I can pull it closed like that, all with one hand. It's got a clip, and I've worn that in my pocket. I put it in the, the little clip on my PFD. Uh, I've just had that for several years. A lot of times I keep it in my dry box, and it's gotten wet, but it's, you know, uh, just a coating on it. It's just it's just a great knife. So the um, Kershaw 1555 Ti is just a great one to have, and it's a good size, and it's sturdy. Um, I would also recommend, uh, you know, some kind of a multi-tool. This is a Gerber Suspension NXT. Um, this dude is, is 22 bucks. That's incredible, <laughs> you know, uh, because there's a lot of stuff on here. It's got the, the spring action and the pliers, which is nice. Then it's also, when you open up the tools on the end here, they actually lock into place. Uh, I've seen, you know, some, uh, um, Leathermans that don't do that. So you, you hold that little release there and then, um, and then it comes, comes down. Now I've just got this, uh, this is new to me. I've not actually taken it out with me yet. Um, I just wanted to try it. Um, I have in the past had this uh, Leatherman, and I've had this for a long time. It just says Leatherman Tool. You know, I don't have a model number. It's like one. Of, it's like the first one they made. I've had this thing forever, but you know, these things they're like eighty to a hundred bucks uh, compared to twenty two. Now, is is that going to last? I don't know. You know, time will tell. Is it going to rust out? I hope not. But still, for twenty two bucks, that's that's just there's a lot of tools and things on there that's handy to have. And so, you know, maybe look at that before you spend a lot on these. Um, I do also carry, and this and this is an everyday carry for me. This is Leatherman Micro. So you open it up, and it's got scissors instead of pliers. I think they do make a small uh, plier version, but this thing's just handy to have. It's 30 bucks. So again, it's still, <laughs> this is more than this, you know, go figure. But uh, but it is a Leatherman name brand, but it's a Micro. I've, I've just, I've carried one of these around for decades in my pocket, and I used to take it on my trip too. So it's, it's nice to have. While we're talking about knives, uh, I didn't really have this on the list, but I saw this uh, in my stuff. Um, a knife sharpener, you know, a little pocket sharpener. That's that's a great thing to have. So this is a um, 
So this is a Smith knife sharpener. So if I open up my blade, what I like to do is uh, hold my blade uh, point up like that, blade edge up, and then you just run the sharpener over it. It's got a coarse sharpener and then it's got a fine kind of a finishing sharpener. So you run it over there a couple times on each one and, uh, and it just puts a nice little edge on there real quickly. Uh, so it's good to have in the field. It's compact, you can take with you. It's also got what's called a rat tail, which is this thing that folds out. Good for um, doing serrated edges and, and curved parts of blades. So just a real lightweight, handy thing to have. Good to keep a edge on your blade if you need it. Okay, um, it's kind of similar to the gear ties. There's uh, Velcro straps, you know, that you can just you know loop around and then and it's and just you know it, it attaches to itself. Good way to fix stuff together. These are little aluminum uh, canisters that uh, the end twist off. It's got an O-ring to keep it sealed up and, and waterproof. Good for, you know, matches, batteries, maybe pills. If you got to take some uh, medication with you, just keep stuff dry, a little ring there to attach it. So those are just some uh, neat little ideas too. The last thing I'm going to mention, I'll put a picture up uh, because I didn't want to bring it inside. It's in my truck, but are the ratchet straps. Now, uh, I do have ratchet straps that I use for when I'm <laughs> carrying my canoe. Um, I'm laughing. I'll, tell you, I'll explain why in a minute. I have ratchet straps I use for my canoe when I'm carrying it because it's longer, a little bit heavier, and I have to use a bed extender. Uh, my kayaks all pretty much fit in my bed with the tailgate either up or down, and so most of the weight's supported by the truck. For my kayaks, I just use paracord to just basically keep it in the truck. It's not holding it up or, you know, it's just basically keeping it from sliding around. Uh, John McNair gives me the hardest time about my paracord. He talks about my string, he calls it. Um, you know, use your string to, to you know, that stuff's going to blow out on the road. He, and he, of course, he's just messing with me. He likes to give me a hard time. But, but for years, that's all I've used on my kayaks is just paracord. Because again, it's not bearing a lot of weight. It's just keeping it from, you know, sliding around or falling out. But if you do have a lot of weight and you want to really secure something, ratchet straps are the way to go. Uh, I have some uh, Bison Gear 20-foot ratchet straps. A lot of them are going to be like 14, 15-foot, 16. But I went ahead and got the longer ones. Um, those were like $30 for a four-pack. Uh, I've used them for a while now. They're really nice. They work well. i got a real bright um, kind of fluorescent green that's a uh, high visibility. So, uh, yeah, ratchet straps is just another great thing that you can use to uh, secure your boat and stuff to your um your vehicles well i think that's uh will pretty much do it uh again it was maybe a little more than 10 but but just some things that i use on a very frequent basis that's great to have and so i think anybody that uh you know enjoys kayaking and canoeing and paddling paddle boarding um it's, these are things that you know can be useful to them so i hope you've uh, enjoyed this found this useful uh, again, thanks to my friend Glenna for the great suggestion. Uh, Y'all be sure and check out her channel. And, uh, and I just hope everybody has a, a very happy and, and wonderful Christmas. See y'all next time.